We're milking some topics today, guys. Uh, just like Attack on Titan. Ooh. I'll kill them all for giving me two more seasons where there's not enough material. It's sad. Yeah, I don't have an open line, but I'm just really sad to hear the news. <laughs> I like I I get that this is an anime tradition, guys. Um, but we need to stop getting behind this trend of dragging a franchise on for too long. And it's even like in our mainstream media, like our American Dads, our Family Guys, or South Park. Some would even argue, but anime didn't need this. And I feel like all of us know exactly where this started. The story where this all kicked off and that's dragon ball <laughs> yeah so i mean much as i love Yu Gi Oh, it didn't need to go on for 224 episodes the original series no it didn't uh what and the it fuck was it doing for that long um, um yeah I think, it, I think it was because at the time it's like at the height of its popularity so they were like we need we we want more of it but we've only got we've only but if you really look at it, it's like you only have, for the original manga, you have the um, first Bakura stuff, then you have Judas Kingdom, then Battle City, and then you have the Millennium World, so you have literally only four story arcs. But if it didn't go on so long, we wouldn't have the memes, Luke. We wouldn't have the, it should have been me! <laughs> oh my god, yeah, you can't get rid of the should have been me meme. But and also as like... well... I uh, just to reiterate that, if we didn't get um, season four filler episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh, we wouldn't have the best season of Yu-Gi-Oh abridged. Yeah, I do very much enjoy season four abridged. But now we've gotten to it where it's like every franchise is doing this. It's either a spinoff movie or five. Or it's... We can argue COVID for part of Attack on Titan. Uh, it, that's definitely was a factor but yeah and that's why i'm a little bit more forgiving when it first happened when it was like okay well we need to divide like this series into two because another anime i watched um 86 which also entered my top 10 along with second titan it was a series that had to be split up because of production issues and considering how much went into the production of both these series during a very troubling time i'm like okay i get yeah. it but now that it's like when it was announced that we're going to do not just part three, but like split up part three into two parts. It's like, no, now you guys just had very poor planning on this you know, or you know, something else, but we'll get into that. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, Pai Jones, but you know what? You know what's crazy? Everyone predicted this when we were, when we were all doing that joke about season four, part two, part five, part seven. <laughs> and now we are getting, we're getting Attack on Titan final season. Part uh, part three, part one. I mean, when I told um, Tyler that, what was your reaction? Uh, I forget what my reaction was. Your reaction was, how? Something it was something along those lines, like in disbelief. I probably was in disbelief because why in the sweet buttery crap baskets would you take? What I believe is seven chapters, it's split it into a two-part season, a, a an entire season split into two parts. At at this point, the freaking cow is completely dry of milk. It, it, it's very much it's very much Simpson-esque. I I I hate bringing that up again and again and again, but like there there are only so many stories to tell before you start repeating your stories. And that's why, like, I enjoy this podcast, for example. It's like, with a rotating cast like we have, like, we can talk about various different things again and again and get, and get different reactions. Whereas, like, with The Simpsons, it's one of the most binge series. So you're, those viewers are viewing these same stories again and again and again. And then when you adapt something, you can only adapt it so well for so long until you're running into the Yu-Gi-Oh! issue or the writing it for the sake of continuing the franchise because the editors are doing it like Dragon Ball. But with Attack on Titan, 
There's like 40 some chapters. I think you said it was like 47 party chains. 48. I actually double checked because uh, I knew it would come up. 48 yeah. chapters in that final arc. How in the fuck are you going to take 48 chapters and milk it over three seasons? Well, you want to know what's you want to know what's crazy as well. We don't actually know how uh, how how long these seasons are actually going to be because season four, part one, that was sixteen episodes. So, for all we know, part three, part one could be like uh, eighteen episodes, which is absolutely asinine because there's no need for it to be that long. Yeah, it I, would be I'm one thing looking... if it's like, for example, it, it would be. Fine, if you're taking, like, a battle and extending it, you know, across two or three episodes, like Frieza, for example, where, like, a lot of those fights felt a little bit rushed, so you want to add fluff and filler to them and make them more bombastic and really get the most out of your animation skills, because it is MAPPA adapting it. Um, so we're just over here, like, we won't really show off our skills, uh, workers are chained to the desk, uh, the interns are dead in the corner... But at the same time, there's only so much that you can fluff it up before it becomes bullshit. And it definitely feels like we got into that point when it's 18, 20, 26 episodes per season and you're adapting three chapters, give or take, per episode usually. There's no need for this whatsoever. Well, to be fair, Attack on Titan chapters, they're monthly, so they're like 40 pages. But even then, I'm looking at like the... Um... The um, uh, Attack on Titan um, uh, chapter chapters online. Um, I know support the official release, but for the sake of this, I'm just using it for brevity. <laughs> We've literally only got the last two volumes, which both have like four chapters in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as Tyler said, there's like seven, eight left. That might not include the epilogue. I'm not sure if it's in the volumes, but yeah. That's probably like it. I can check it. And we have like two really parts quick. to cover. Um, but so. um, one other thing I wanted to bring up with this discussion, which may be like the one justification for why this could be happening, is the fact that the ending of Attack on Titan is notably controversial. Like, not even just among the anime community, like the author himself, like he knows it's controversial because last time I think he went to a con. Uh, he gave out like um, a little message saying, hey, guys, uh, I just ask that everyone please be civil when I'm attending this con. And it was actually pretty sad to see that happen, that he was like so afraid of the fan base he sort of cultivated over time because of this controversial ending. And I Ishiyama is very, very involved with the anime production. So there is a chance that we might be getting an anime only ending. And that could be why all this is happening. Although, I, at this point, I'm not sure if that's a good idea for two reasons. One, the hate for the ending is very overblown. Having read the whole series, it's actually very suitable for the kind of story being told. And yeah. two, I feel like you're just digging yourself a bit bigger grave because mm -hmm. I don't see any ending that could be satisfying except for the one where Aaron wins. That's, I think, the one ending that fans would have been quote unquote okay with or at least a segment of the fan base but um yeah I mean, this I, is a this... series that had its own fan ending being written by multiple different people too and it does look like the epilogue oh, yeah. is included in some editions of the final volume not all so who the hell knows what's going to happen here on that end um i forgot about the fan endings i will say though um having spent like almost too much time on tiktok recently <sighs> like the fan base is like still excited to watch more attack on titan so the it's not like this will be a show that like some series where people will have completely lost all interest in and just won't be watching it this will still be watched but the question is will it be watched as something to be like okay it's a conclusion to like an amazing story from a manga series or will it be let's just see how this train wreck concludes i don't um, know at this point i think it'll be like half and half in that case in my in my personal opinion but i just wanted to go on, go back to what you were saying about um uh, uh Ishi, uh ishiyama being involved with the anime production and yeah kind of digging yourself in a, with a hole whereas if you look at something like say bleach with kubo like where he's like, oh no, some things need to be extended. 
And I feel like uh, I feel like Bleach would be the only one that I'd be satisfied with multiple parts to the final season. I, I mean, I get both sides of it. Like, uh, an author wants to have their story be loved in some capacity, right? So, him realizing that his ending wasn't what people wanted, even though he admitted it was a tragedy basically from the beginning. Like, this won't be a happy story kind of thing. There's definitely some need to step back, like, okay, how do I correct this enough to where it's mo more well-received from the artist's standpoint? But at the same time, like, I don't like the idea of breaking things up, even in, even in Bleach. Like, I don't think that that's a very necessary story method because you you wrote the story how you wanted it to be written that's your that's yours that's you, your art you shouldn't have to correct it just because the internet doesn't like it and the vocal minority or to some cases i guess the vocal majority hating it it's still your story i just still to this day feel really bad that kubo like deleted his social media over the fucking Biakio. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I feel like, uh, uh, I feel like, as well, going back to Bleach, like, Kubo, I don't think what, uh, was satisfied with, uh, with it, and it was all to do with his health problems at the time, like, he, he had health problems during the final arc, so I feel like he had a lot more to tell, he just was like, I can either do. I can either tell it and uh, basically put myself further in the grave, or I can just not, uh, or I can just save it for later when the anime comes back. Because apparently, it's been confirmed that the anime was never cancelled. That's interesting, and something I didn't know. Like, you find that surprising. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think it. Uh, somebody mentioned that it wasn't actually cancelled; it was just put on hold because they caught the manga. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Like, when you have nothing else to, you know, tell, right? Like, why not pause it? But at the same time, like, it's kind of, um... Kind of surprising that you're just here pausing it just to catch up. And then waiting so long after it ended to even resume production. That's where I kind of draw the line of, like... Was this cancelled or was this put on production hold? Because we don't really know a lot of the behind the scenes of Periop too much. But it's the same thing with like Toei, right? Like it's rumored that there's supposed to be more of Dragon Ball Super, for example. Even though like all we're getting are movies at this point that are canon-esque but not canon so can we, yeah, the manga is still going, so there is uh, stuff to adapt. How how much more can that can it be milk? Um, what what will take it for um, Dragon Ball? To, will it take Goku um, basically killing killing himself because of his own power scaling? You know what? I, mean, I like wouldn't right give now, that. right now in the super manga, what they're doing is they're focusing actually on. Goten and Trunks in their high school days. So they're basically doing what they did with Gohan back in uh, Dragon Ball Z, but with those two characters. So with that, I honestly feel like this series could uh, extend itself as long as it wants, because they could just eventually do the same thing with Pan and Bra, because they are also kids in this world. So, yeah, I Dragon Ball can just kind of, like, extend itself beyond time. It's like a it's like a constant cycle of reincarnation, like... Yup. Like, this is like going on some, like... Z like, the plot of Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, I don't want to spoil that, because... I don't know if there's people here interested in playing the game, but... I, I, I mean, played I the, the first story, one. But... Yeah. I, I still need to play 2 and 3. Uh, they're actually sitting in my Nintendo Switch cart right now. <laughs> to play while I'm on my vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but um no like I, I i get it like with dragon ball you have the constant like reincarnation cycle built right into the plot you can have that go on for fucking ad infinium but at the same time like with attack on titan you don't really have that you have arguable genocide as the plot of 
<laughs> Attack on Titan. <laughs> oh no, it is. It's not arguable genocide. It is. It is genocide. And um, that's another thing that I was I, fielding the hate comments. But yeah, yeah. you're right. <laughs> and that's another thing that I'd like to point out to the fandom about their hypocrisy because that um, uh, Gabby kills one person. They're like, how dare she? How how dare she? She killed off the uh, the sweetest present. Blah, blah, blah. Aaron basically comes out and says, "I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna kill everyone in the world, including people that could be like Sasha." And they're like, "That's a true leader, right there." They're I like forty-five kidding. degrees kidding. off with their hand up in the sky. Um, yeah, I am not even kidding. Someone, at, uh, there was actually someone who said that about Aaron. He's a true leader because he commits genocide. <laughs> um, but like, I, I have interacted with those types of fans online and that's why i'm yeah. so glad like i've removed twitter from yeah. my phone and there, there is a certain leader in history that that reminds uh -huh. me of i can't quite figure out who it is who it is i think it has the rumbling with... and the cleansing sound very similar um... yeah i think it has something to do with each girl having a full bring in the shape of the symbol like that but uh, i can't i can't quite put my finger on it right but but at the same time, like, it's fiction. This isn't a real event. This isn't really, you know, adding to controversy or actual hate crimes, uh, except against the author, uh, who received innumerable death threats for the ending. Yeah, and that's another thing as well. People don't harass the author just because you don't like the ending of a series. Or uh, and don't, you know, emulate the book burnings like in the one the author already made their bank right they, they've already got all of the the money that they need for you know ever basically because this is yeah. still one of the most popular works of fiction on the planet but still yeah. you're that's, solving nothing by burning your volumes it doesn't solve anything with bleach it's not solving anything with attack on titan they already made their money <laughs> yeah, that's what fan fiction's for. Like, case in point, I don't like how Yuzu and Kari in Bleach were wasted in the final arc. Mm -hmm. Somebody does a fan fiction that corrects that. I am perfectly happy with that. That was uh. a loud beep. There's yeah, always yeah, loud sure beeps. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so to give uh, another side to the story, as have, I guess, a, the big Attack on Titan fan here. Uh, what I like about the story is the fact that we did get to follow Aaron from the beginning to the point where he's arguably the antagonist of his own story. Although that, by definition, is a whole other thing, because if it's from someone's perspective, he's still technically the protagonist, but whatever. Uh, but the thing is, even at the point where Aaron is committing a worldwide genocide the fact that we saw exactly what led up to him doing that and how we're so so invested in him completing the journey i think that's still like really great storytelling and mm -hmm. i even though i was wa i knew that at the end he had to be stopped because of course he did the i was still very much invested in him doing as much damage as he could because i knew why he was doing it and also it would have just been a more fun story so I think that's the other reason I was pretty okay with how it ended. And oh, while I'll still probably be cheering for Aaron when the anime comes back, because even though I know how it all ends, I'm still very much like, I very much enjoyed watching him like fight uh, the destiny of his own people the way he did. Right. Like I, I was invested in his journey for what it was like. There's, there's, Arguably, still one very phenomenal story in there. I just am not a fan of how they've stretched out this much production-wise. I'm also not a fan of how MAPPA is scooping up every fucking anime on the planet, either. Like, it's it's very much, like, leading to these types of scenarios. And that's another reason why this is such a fascinating topic to dive into. Because when they're stretching out... A popular series five six seven seasons worth of crap for you know whatever purpose they are and we can sit here until we're blue in the face and argue back and forth about what it is but scooping up every other popular anime to where they essentially have a monopoly on the industry 
it's leading to these issues. Like, the rumors that they're getting, like, One Punch Man Season 3, and they're getting, like... <clears throat> They have JJK Season 2 coming out. They have this coming out. That Like, I shared a TikTok. I know at least a couple of you saw it. Uh, like, where I was making the joke of, like, the intern's dead in the corner, you know? Like, I, I'm not a fan of that. I and it's the same issue I have with, like, Funimation slash Crunchyroll's voice acting. Like, there's more than five voice actors on the planet. Please give somebody else some fucking work. Uh, <laughs> but... I, I would like to see other studios be able to have a chance to adapt some of these stories instead of relying on one studio just because they're the big name in the industry right now, you know? Yeah, what? maybe maybe we can get someone to take care of uh, the intern over there. Uh, maybe clean up that corpse. <laughs> well, we've got someone um, uh, taking care of the intern for uh, Mission Yosuko Friday because it's not MAPPA doing it. And they have a decent studio to do it. And it's it's wild that, like, when you have more than three studios and seven people to do your project, you can have a decent-looking product. And, yeah. and you're not stretched out to where you're having to, like, have your A team on the one that's going to make you the most money. And then put your C team on random anime number 75 that you picked up for the production season of Winter. Yeah, it, that's what baffles me. Like we have, we have really three studios carrying the entire industry right now, and one of them has ninety five percent of the projects. It seems like so that that's like the the Z side to this argument that really needs to be addressed. And I really wish Japan would do something about like one studio or two studios picking up every big project. But they they definitely realize anime is the biggest commodity for them, so they don't really see an issue with it, I guess. Yeah. Though, uh, this this may be because like I'm not very knowledgeable. Like, there's not very much many other studios who can pick up this stuff. Like, there's definitely like a need for the production, the the anime to fit the studio, right? There are studios that are very good at slice of life stuff. There are studios that are very good at your action stuff. There are studios that are very good at your, like, Giri, your Yaoi, whatever. Uh, it's <clears throat> Studio Dean who just... Studio Dean. Your your studio... Who did, it, who did uh, Seven Deadly Sins Season 3 where it was, like, cum blood? Studio Dean. Okay, yeah, that's why you were bringing that one up. I couldn't remember which atrocious uh, studio was doing that. Or you have your slideshow studios, that, like the one that's doing <laughs> Record Ragnarok. Yeah, uh, well, I actually did look about uh, look at the um, uh, rating for Season 2 of Record Ragnarok. It's better than Season 1. The trailer looked better, so you have that going for you. Um, but... Like, you have to get the... Who fits what, you know? I get that, so... I guess I can forgive that side of things, but it's just... It's annoying when you have this constantly going on. Um, It's almost like back when Naruto drug on for 750 fucking episodes. It didn't need to be that many episodes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, as well... Uh, but pray for our souls when we do eventually tackle Naruto. Oh, I have a bottle of Everclear to my left right now for that. I am mentally preparing myself by traveling uh, traveling to the top of Mount Fuji to meet the manga sage. Well, I I'd mean... Also like to to Go ahead. Yeah, I'd also like to toss in through talk about studios. Uh, another thing I've really enjoyed... Uh, recently that studios have been doing, or maybe not too recently, is that the studios like PA Works and WIT have been reducing more and more original work rather than adapting, which might also be part of the reason so much work is being put on, like, a handful uh, right now. But I, the original stuff just works really well, and of course you never have to worry about any spoilers or anybody ruining the story for you, and you just get to enjoy, like, a complete story instead of, well, we'll leave this on a cliffhanger because it, there's more story that we, has to be adapted. Well, I mean, you also have things like Boshi the Rock, which is, like, a four-panel story, story that's getting fleshed out over, like, 12 episodes. 
and that was adapted masterfully. Like that was so much fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like so much fun the girl, which is really like a one panel. Yeah, yeah, I was about to bring that one up. That like you'd probably that like you'd probably find like the newspaper. Yeah, no, like it, it was like essentially adapting the Sunday funnies that we used to have over here. That I don't yeah. know if there's still a thing because I uh, haven't had a fucking newspaper in like seven <laughs> years. <laughs> uh, it's funny. It's funny with that because I actually mentioned before telling um, Tyler that uh, how. Um, how much Child is a Girl was uh, actually made. I mentioned like there's only 900 and odd chapters, and uh, and he was like freaking out about that. Right, like 900 and some chapters of a one-panel story. You know, it, it makes sense when you say it that way. But at the same time, like when you hear the number 900, you're thinking, "Oh my God, it's there was something close to One Piece." <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, if anything, it was like. Um, closer to like uh i'd say dr stone length right like once it's all condensed but like at the same time hearing that number it's like oh my god this is insurmountable um and that's how i felt like reading apo was like this is insurmountable because it's so long i never finished apo because like my brain's like there's it's still ongoing it's still like I can't keep up with this while trying to fucking read it. So that's like the same way like I am with One Piece. Like I'll start to catch up to it and then I'll just let it fall by the wayside and then I'm like in it goes in and out of my brain so fast I'm like I gotta go back and reread it. Now I'm redoing that with Ranger Reject or as we call it over here Go Go Loser Ranger which I'm still not a fan of that God, name. God I hate that name so much. Like, if they actually use that for, like, the dub or something, I'm gonna... So <laughs> go, go, loser, ranger! <laughs> you know what? That, that just Get reminds Ron me... Get Ron Wasserman to do the theme, please. That, that just reminds me of when people don't, who don't like Power Rangers um, actually think that that's what they're all about. I mean, in a way, it fits so well over here because it's marketable to that nostalgia side of people. But it's still so fucking dumb because there's more than Mighty Morphin. I, we still live solely on the nostalgia of that one season of Power Rangers so heavily. It's annoying. I, even I though there's so many other Rangers that people grew up with. Right, like there's an entire generation now that Megaforce was their introduction to Power Rangers. That and is it's depressing to think thing. about because it's like arguably the most hate, critically panned season of Power Rangers, but that was their first season. And think about like if they went, were to go back and watch like the immense cheese that was Mighty Morphin now. <laughs> oh God. I, I I know my introduction to Power Rangers how like very small it was was a power ranger samurai yeah no like that was a decent series like but like i'm going back and reading uh ranger reject which i will continue to call it um simply for a purpose similar to this where we can talk about that and i'm loving the fact that how it's paced like an actual saturday morning cartoon and I, in a way, kind of pity the studio that's adapting it because capturing that feel is going to be so difficult because of how it's so gory and there's going to be two very distinct markets for that show because you're going to have the Power Rangers fans that are going to be attached to it and they're going to try to show it to their kids. And, like, seven chapters in, you have one of the Rangers just straight up murder a dude. <laughs> <gasps> awesome yeah i recommend the kid, this to the anyone kid, as someone uh, who's fully caught up yeah the kids will probably be thinking like this is awesome the parents will be like how dare they show this to my little billy right billy is innocent even though i've probably got uh, uh even though i've probably got something in in my in my cabinet which um could li literally do the exact same thing 
Right, but the, think about the the Karen S side of our society that will be bitching about that because it's literally Power Rangers in its own right. So they'll be like, "Oh, this the little Timmy over there can just enjoy this," and then seven chapters in, it's just a straight up homicide, and you're gonna have the the call to cancel it. And it's the same way I feel bad about David Productions getting on Dead Unlocked because they're going to get panned the hell out of for the first chapter, first few chapters of Undead Unluck right now. <clears throat> Even if I'm not a fan of that series. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I'm looking forward to those two mega controversies on Twitter. Even though I don't have it on my phone, just I'm just going to be there like scrolling through when they air just to see the reaction <laughs> but like it's funny because attack on titan is just arguably worse its first episode is nightmare fuel but oh, it yeah. yeah receives so well so it's it's wild to me like i i, I love the duality of man in that um because you have aaron's mom just get fucking eight like episode one chapter one and it's that's fine that's okay to show on a 12 a.m time slot on adult swim <laughs> it was a different time back then <laughs> I, and now but, uh, like could you imagine if we were still in an era where disney showed anime just for well, that would be weird <laughs> but then again with disney their their streaming services they are eating up all the anime so i actually i can imagine that I, I forgot really that Disney nuts. Plus was getting anime now. Holy shit. What yeah, a weird time. I haven't even they've seen still, Tokyo Revengers for this reason. They, they've still got Bleach on there. Um, God. Where, which, is cra- which is crazy when when you have di- this, uh, when you have the almighty mouse um, also in the same presence as Unohana's Bonkai, which now we know exactly what that does. <laughs> I fucking love our world sometimes. It's so wild. Yeah, I know. Um, but I just wanted to go back to the whole um, uh, multiple seasons thing. Uh, I feel like one of the reasons uh, how this can be avoided is like, don't make that. Uh, uh, I mean, I know it. I, uh, I know it's like, okay, you've only got three months for one season. So you've only got 13, 13 episodes. Just don't make it, just don't make it like um, uh, one season. Make it like um, uh, like 26, like don't make it 30 episodes, make it longer. Right, like here, here's a, another option. Like if we're getting close to the, caught up with the like source material, right? Pause production. Be like, hey, we're going to put this on pause for six months while the manga has a chance to build it up and continue doing that to where you can have so many, you know, X number of seasons, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, otherwise, you end up in the, in a place with case in point, uh, the beginning of uh, 101 in One Piece. I will, I will never forget this, where they literally stretched out Luffy, um, Luffy having a balance battle with someone in a sumo match for one minute, which was only like one, one, uh, uh, which was only like half a page in the manga. <laughs> Uh, uh, example I have um, is a series I discovered on Crunchyroll called Radiant, and like I, and I, when I watched the first season and the second one, and I, I was surprised it just ended with no confirmation. Especially like with the second season, I didn't even think was happening because the first season barely had people watching it. But I thought, okay, cool, we're gonna get like all the seasons we need. But when the second season ended, I was surprised there wasn't a third one confirmed. But then I saw there was enough source material. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But then as we caught up and there was like so much more volumes added, I was thinking, why aren't there any more announcements for another season? So eventually I just jumped into the manga or mantra itself. And I'm almost caught up. And I understand now why they haven't done it. And that's because each season covered a very specific arc in the story and the arc that the third season would cover is not done yet and so i 
kind of respect the fact that they're like, yeah, okay, we're not going to make another season of this till this arc's well and wrapped up. So I think that's another good example of like a series where, although in that situation, I think the publishing company is working very closely with the animation studio. Um, so it's a special exception, but I do appreciate that they didn't just do what they did with season one and just add a bunch of filler in for a third season and yeah. are just waiting for this arc to be wrapped up. Yeah, no, like, it, it, you could end up with, like, one of those, like, mega filler arcs where, like, you're going to the village hidden in the fucking stars in Naruto instead of, like, waiting for, like, three weeks, four weeks for, like, enough chapters to continue what was actually happening and the story to continue. It, it's just... I, I remember, like... Back in the early, like, days of Naruto watching that weekly, and I could not imagine going back and doing that now. And then I offered to throw that into content purposes here, and I'm kicking myself in the dick every day for saying, let's do this, because I'm dreading that. I, I'm dreading that video. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, just just solely on the fact that I know I'm going to have to suffer through fucking Boruto after that. And I mean, oh, it, go ahead. Could just not watch Boruto. No, no, because it's canon. I gotta, I gotta suffer yeah, through we it. Yeah, we gotta suffer for it. I honestly want, uh, want one smart to get, uh, to get into one of these. Uh, one of these mod casts one of these days, especially with Naruto, considering he's he's like the biggest Nar Naruto fan we've got in Control Chaos. I I would love to have him on sometime just to shit all over Naruto. I J mean, I'll definitely be up for discussions since I'm caught up on Boruto myself and have been enjoying it. Though I have to watch the anime still because I've just been on the manga. And the, the the issue I have is they seem to be taking two very different approaches to how they're telling the story. Just from yeah, what but I've I think seen. what's because one's weekly, like the anime just has to keep coming out because that's what Studio Periot does with its non Akudama Bleach Thousand Year War team. But while the manga is like we're gonna wait once a month, but then like like so minimal progress in the story. <laughs> It's kind of annoying, to be honest, at times, but I also am enjoying the story well enough, and, like, the last chapter made, like, really good progress, so can't complain too much. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing, like, it's, it's being a monthly makes it very difficult to produce a weekly anime, and that's why I'm not a fan of continuing this trend of weekly anime that we still seem to have some studios stuck in. Cause... I agree, I'm like, I don't get why, like, these studios are still stuck in the ways of weekly anime. It's like a, it's like a. I'm trying to think of a good analogy. It's like, it's like some. It's like it's doing like, a monster of the week story, basically. Like, yeah. You, you gotta you gotta pump one out. You gotta get your Scooby Doo on, but at the same time, it hinders the the storytelling process. Like you you can't tell. A coherent story when there's no progress when something is coming out every month so why unless you have out? like a specific plan and like everything is like planned and like fucking adv advanced and you're playing like 5d chess or some shit unless the, unless maybe the author is sitting there like here is the story beats for the next couple months have fun with it and then i'll do my own thing over here with my artist and then That's it. i i guess they could do it that way we're, we're just a bunch like of a American very coherent way to do it. You know, so we we have zero insight into like the animation industry, other than the fact that we consume the product. <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing. And that's another thing as well that really irritates me when uh, you have people talking about talking about that as if they know what's go what's going on. Like case in point, when people are complaining about how long it's taken. Um, Dot Stone season three to come out when really it's only been two years since season two. But but Luke, they it seems to be a year in between. Yeah, but Luke, they're they're doing high card now. Why can't they do my Doctor Stone season three? Where's well, my Doctor already... Stone? Well, here here's here's a crazy idea. 
Doctor Stone season three has been out for years. You just right. gotta read it. But I'm too lazy to pick up a book. Well, here's the thing. Uh, why, why can you do that for One Piece? Why can't you do that for Bleach? Because we had to wait Not like sure multiple. Not specifically years. referring to Vex or. No, no, <laughs> just mean people no, in no. I'm referring to one specific person in uh, what I'm referring to for Neverworld because he's like, I'm only a Doctor Stone uh, anim anime watcher, and that's fine. But when you're complaining about how long it's taking, it's like right. No, there, there's plenty of YouTubers that do this, and it, and, it's a and very they, annoying they, trend. They go, and they go like, oh, I love Boichi's art. I like, but you're not even reading the freaking manga. I almost spit gamer subs all over the mo monitor here, laughing at that. Um, but no, like, I, I, I get it. Like, there are some stories that are easy to read, and there are some that are way too technical to actually pick up and read weekly. And Dr. Stone is very much more on that technical end if you're yeah, unable to I understand get, it. I get, I get that, but at the same time, stop complaining that it's taking right. so long. And there's a lot more detail put into the art of something like a Dr. Stone where you have to com draw all these and animate all these complicated machines and shit versus like, here is a beam fight, go watch it. Yeah, I'd, I'd like I'd... to add the studio goes behind the scenes and actually does some of the science to like properly make it. I really appreciate that kind of stuff and I'm sure oh, it also yeah. takes time. Right. Yeah, no, it do, like, yeah, it does take 100%. time. Yeah, I'd, I'm glad that they've taken their time with uh, season three because it's got my favorite. It's going to be adapting my favorite arc in the series. Mm -hmm. It's adapting one of the the best arcs in the fucking series for sure. And I'm 100 percent okay with waiting however long they want to take with it. What I am not okay with did have has anybody logged on to Netflix since they started adding the the expired animes? We'll call them. Uh, no. What? Uh, Wait, what? 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 So they started adding like the 1997 Berserk. They started adding like monsters, oh, mo monster, stuff like that. Monster. I, I'm I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed by that because I was really excited that it's like, oh, I don't even get to. I don't even get to um, hear Kevin Silverstein's Johan. It it has the French dub and the Japanese dub, and that is it. <sighs> that. <sighs> And it's not even the whole series as well. It's the That's first 30 episodes uh, of Monster. It's, I think, the first... Uh, actually, let me log in to see how many episodes of Nana got added. <clears throat> uh, yeah, one of my best friends uh, talked to me about that. Said it was an okay series, but uh, not one that's actually oh, worth me getting too invested in. I, I'm not watching the Netflix Awards Collection homepage yeah, that pops up for me too to chaos <laughs> anyway uh, i guess while vex is doing that uh, another thing i want to bring up since we kind of peripherally have been talking about it is we're talking about series that got milked a lot specific attack on titan but it seems to be a phenomenon with a lot of examples we brought up like dragon ball and naruto and i think another one that i want to throw up in there is a fairy tale because oh, like God, when yes. fairy tale the 100 year quest was like announced at first i thought at first I thought it would just be like a short little series to be like oh yeah nazi talked about this thing in the very last um episode slash chapter so we're just kind of going to expand on it a bit no nope. it's like an entire entire it's, story and it's getting its own anime now. It's, a, it's an entire sequel series <laughs> Not yeah, only I is it an entire sure. sequel series, it is going on for fucking ever. It seems like. But yeah, I will, seems to be. But to to his credit, to his credit, Hiro Mashima is still at least keeping himself busy enough with pro mm -hmm. with, with products that he actually loves. Yeah, you can definitely tell he's actually making things that he enjoys making. Yeah, so unlike very un much unlike. Um, where with Kishimoto, who was like, "Oh, my si my new series failed. I need to go back to my old series just to have something to do." I no! guess Nana hasn't a been added to it yet, uh, but the it is the first thirty episodes of Mon Monster got added, um, which is basically half of the half of the original series. Um, which is absurd to think about when the entire like marketing behind it is like we're adding all of these expired licensed anime to our platform, but they're not doing it 
in its entirety. And that's the biggest downfall to Netflix's anime adaptations is, like, they don't want to drop everything at once when their entire gimmick was binging. <laughs> that's what ruined, like, JoJo Part 6, is, like, they dropped it, like, yeah. weekly. <laughs> uh, but no, like, you're right, like, Fairy Tale has, like, seven different spinoffs from what I've seen. It um, does. I've read a few of them, but not that many but like a thousand or 100 year it's like a full-on sequel series which i mean it was if it was a short sequel series just to be like here's where the characters are and what they're doing that would have been a nice way to wrap up this huge story but it's just like kind of continuing itself and i guess fans are enjoying it which is good but it also makes me wonder like how many of these series like are we really going to do this for like i was talking with the twitter mutual about who like suggested it's like oh my hero is gonna be wrapping up soon i wonder if we'll ever no. get no uh, i no. i saw god no. i saw didn't even that. finish the sentence and you guys uh, are just no yeah we will uh, i do I, I saw that um and it really it really annoys me because they do that for series that they're fans of but they don't but they're like what they're like for other series like with um uh i'll just use i'll just use an example that i'm looking at right now toradora that's a series that could have that I would be perfectly happy having a sequel series, but a lot of people are just like, "What? No!" Yeah, did it so well, therefore it doesn't deserve it. Well, to be fair, I think when Doctor Stone was ending, we were at a little bit of a phase where we thought, "Oh, well, you could do more with Doctor Stone." And weird enough, still, the epil- it, Well, <laughs> here's the thing with my hero: like, if Kishimoto theoretically wanted to keep my hero going. Uh, he can simply just do, like, slice of life shit with the kids in the dorms. I think you meant Horikoshi. <laughs> yeah, you meant Horikoshi. But Wait, the, the what problem... did I say? What did I say? Ishimoto. Ishimoto. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, uh, Horikoshi. If Horikoshi wanted to keep my hero going, you can just do slice of life shit in the dorms. Yeah, but the problem with that is what it, it is one thing. The, uh, well, three word, four words. The cultural festival. Uh, well, no. Uh, yeah, the cultural festival arc. Well, three words. You're trying to make sure your words are the yeah, right. I was trying to. But, yeah, you're the trying to is... do the word count, but like you're, you're right. Like the slice of life didn't seem to work too well with his writing style. Uh, I think it was more. I mean, to be people... fair, I'm in that camp, so I don't think it would hey, be. A good I, li- idea I like the cultural festival arc. We got the best villain in the series. No, uh, yeah, the probably... gentle stuff was great, but to be fair, he wasn't actually. He was in the arc, but he wasn't part of the cultural festival. That's yeah. the thing. Uh, I, I, people did. Uh, I, a lot of anime onlys didn't like, especially when uh, Deku said, "You were the hardest person. I, uh, you were the." Uh, most difficult person I ever had to fight and they took that to me like gentle was stronger than like overhaul stronger than um um Shigaraki when it's like no it, no he was saying it in a metaphorical sense that he could see gentle's point of view yeah the payoff for it was pretty good based on the current chapter so that was nice yeah but also, uh, like I what I'm saying is I don't that. want that uh, sorry Tyler I just want when you talk uh what i meant when i say i'm not too big in the cultural festival is specifically the culture hold up i guess my headphones died this before definitely uh have it be a case of like okay now that you have an audience for your series um instead of milking something for ages why not um why not have another shot with this with this series that you tried and failed but touch it up a little bit you know that's a pretty good idea although i'm not sure how many like like, mankas would be emotionally capable of like redoing their like works like, I feel like in Western society, they do kind of do this thing where they pitch a, a story or an animation project, but it doesn't go through. 
and then they give it to somebody else. But mangas, they seem to just kind of give up on a story after it's done. Yeah, but which is sad because I, I would love um, if Kubo, if he really, really wanted to, do a remake of um, Zombie Powder. Oh, I, I mean, would love that. Not, 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 not um, rewriting the story, just um, uh, restarting the story from the beginning, but just t- changing things up a bit. Yeah, like, that would work really well, because that's a story that he seemed to be really passionate about, it just didn't work out well. Um, yeah. And especially, like, the one that I would really love to have another shot uh, would be Time Paradox <laughs> Ghostwriter, but... The way I would do it is like I wouldn't have it be um, the go the plagiarism angle. I would literally have it be the girl is dead and the guy's writing the story, so he's literally a ghost writer for a dead manga car. That's such a smart idea. I was gonna say they could just write his own story from the future and have that be a paradox, but I like your idea better. Your idea is. Yeah, because yeah. when I first heard that, like Ghost Riot, I thought it was that that was the angle they were going to take. Like he's right, he, he's failing at he's failing at writing manga. And he, uh, this girl who's dead comes back as a ghost, and she's like, "Hey, I've got this series. I never managed to get published. Can you publish it for me and be my ghost writer?" No, like that that makes sense for, just based on the the title itself. Like that that makes sense. That's kind of like the. The way my brain was going with it as well, actually, uh, when it first aired. Uh, but we saw how poorly received it was because it's like a big deal in Japan, I guess. So, like, yeah. it got critically well, think, Like, okay, what would be, what would make this series work that it's not plagiarism? Because being a ghostwriter is not plagiarism. No, 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 not at all. Like, e- even there are people like uh, Stephen King that write their own shit under a different name back in the day, like his Bachman books, which are incredibly fucked up. Uh, like, some of his m- most dark writing was under the Bachman name. But, you know, like, that was pseudonym more than, like, ghost writing. Uh, you have people that continue franchises, like Sanderson continued um, the Wheel of Time franchise you know stuff like that like it 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 could work because it's a common practice IRL so that would be you know a fun one to bring back i would love to see phantom seer come back uh yeah i knew i knew that had to come up eventually but I mean, yeah that's the classic yeah. like that that's my go to that was my baby that was so much fun i love the art style that i love the i love the story that was going on uh, Fex, Fex, it's not your baby, it's for Boyle's baby. It's for Boyle can off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, what? Uh, uh, um, uh, it's a joke because every series that for Boyle gets into, he's like, it's my <laughs> baby, this is my baby. Uh, but no, like, it was one that he brought up constantly, like, you should read this, you should read this. And I, I, I did like that. I like that more than Diamond in the Rough. Diamond in the Rough is a very rough start, ironically. Uh, but it's okay. Like there, there's nothing really redeeming in that first batch of chapters I read on stream for for me to like be like this is an instant recommendation. I don't know if it's gotten any better since I stopped reading it on stream. Um, well, as someone who's caught up, I will say the story is pretty decent where it is. But yeah, Phantom Seer was definitely much stronger, um, even where it left off than Diamond the Rough. Diamond the Rough has enough potential to be like, man, I could see this series going on for a while and doing a lot of cool stuff but it's still like yeah this is cool but it's just okay yeah like that... even compared to other jump plus series i'm that have started later that i'm reading like marriage toxin or maggie lumiere yeah like i know there's one that i keeps getting recommended is oshi no Koi, and that's one i should probably yeah that's top tier but the anime is coming out if you guys want to wait for the end yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna wait for the anime yeah, I'll I'll start from the anime and then continue the manga if it keeps me. Um, but the like, first the, episode will be really weird. Just like go with it is all I can say. Oh, I I've heard like it's very bizarro land uh, at start and then it just goes um, better from there. But um, yeah, no, like now that I got my my IEMs in, I had to find them um, and I can actually hear you guys on Discord and in the recording. Uh, <laughs> I those. I love Razor. 
I love Razer. This is not sponsored. But I wish for the love of fucking Christ they would make a battery that lasts once it's sat there and charged for more than like 48 hours. <laughs> Because that was fully charged when we started, and I heard it beeping. I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. I hope I can power through this. Nope. <laughs> so, like, there was a solid, like, two minutes. I did not hear you guys. I just stopped the recording. I'm like, I, I can't contribute to the conversation, so I'm going to stop it, and then I'm going to stitch this shit together and post. But, yeah, no, there, there's one other, like, interesting tidbit that I want to bring up. I don't know how you guys will, will feel about this, but, like, there's a potential for something else to be milked here. And it's the name of an author. So... In what so, way? So, like, you you know Toriyama, the second he's attached to something, he's gonna be instantly, like, sought after. You, you see... You see that with, like, his additions to stuff like... You know, Dragon Quest and, like, other character creations. Like, they, they got him specifically to create shit for jump force um so do you think this net new generation of authors is going to have the same effect say you're like fujimoto's for example you're horikoshi's you think they'll be put into that same the yes same boat? We're, we're already seeing that with um, fujimoto because literally everything that he has touched everyone's been like we need it we need it now we need it now like with look back and goodbye area now chainsaw man part two so I I got my hands on the seventeen twenty one uh, batch of one shots, and I will say, you can definitely tell he's grown as a writer and an artist Absolutely, from those. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, which is ironic considering I, uh, his last one shot before um, Chainsaw Man Part Two came out, I thought was his weakest one shot. I. I can see why you agree with that. I can see why you would have that opinion because it's something that kind of already got touched on inside of Chainsaw Man, like the the film love. Yeah, it, it's not it's not just that. It's just the fact that compared to the last two, it was it was uh, it was just like a standard chapter, like standard twenty page chapter. I just thought it was going to be as long as like Goodbye Ari or Looking or Look Back. Oh, you're talking about the other one that uh, he just contributed. Oh, yeah, to. I was also thinking of a different one. I was thinking uh, he was yeah, talking okay, about but that Harry. one. But that one, I think, was more like um, less of a story and more of a commentary. Okay. Like it actually just felt like Fujimoto, like talking to the audience, like guys, I I'm just trying to write stories here. Please don't overinflate everything I do. <laughs> and I'm just like, I felt really bad for him because, like, as much as like I think Fujimoto gets like almost. Too much credit for some of the stuff he does. I, it's not like his fault. He's not actually trying to be pretentious. That, like, it's literally everybody else that's like feeding into anything he makes. Well, He's I mean, it's the Rick and Morty effect. It's the Rick and Morty effect. Yeah, like, basically. You, you, you need a high IQ to understand Fujimoto kind of thing. But at, at the same time, like, I I don't feel too bad for the man in a way because he has found like getting paid. Right, like, he's getting paid and he's enjoying what he loves. Like, if it was getting to the point where, like, he wasn't enjoying it and you could clearly tell he wasn't enjoying being put up on this pedestal, then, yeah, I would feel more bad for him. But at the same time, like, he's clearly having fun with it uh, in, in his own right. Now, if he, I do I do agree, like, it, there, there's definitely some meta commentary there in some of the stuff he's doing, like, because he realizes, like, he's being idolized and I don't think that he likes being put up that highly um but i i do feel that like this new generation is going to be continue to be treated like that because we as a society stupidly idolize everybody we respect and with something that really needs to stop because we've seen recently and red and i'll be tackling this in a special episode of the podcast at some point i don't know when it'll be going up uh we're supposed to be filming that tomorrow uh, that some of our idols are scumbags, and we've learned this throughout the the days. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and it can lead to cancellation of stuff, um, especially with a third series about acting before Carney came along, um, and I. I'm really annoyed by that. Well, I mean, even in the YouTube space, we, we see that there are people that take advantage of their fame, and that's an unfortunate side of this business, and 
I know a lot of people don't like YouTube being considered a business, but this is our business. This is our... It is a business at this point. Like, literally, people are making living livings off this. Right, but you have people all the way back to Lion Maker Studios that have taken advantage of their position. And then you oh, have yeah. people like Boy in a Band, etc., 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 that have taken advantage of their fame and fans, etc. And for me in particular like it is very hard to be a fan of some genres of music because you realize that those genres of music te tend to lead to the most cancellations <laughs> um so and, looking at you pop punk <laughs> yeah and that's another thing uh, and that's another thing as well that's another thing as well um not um keeping on the topic of milking stuff it's like People need to stop milking the same content on YouTube again and again and again. What, Luke? You don't love the reacting to cursed memes episode number seventy-five? No, and I don't. I, and I, 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 in the same way, I don't love. Uh, I don't love um, Tekken One Hundred One doing the favorite flavors, favorite ice cream flavors of the Straw Hat Pirates. It's like, come on! <laughs> I forgot he did that dumb shit sometimes. Yeah, uh... yeah. I mean, when he does his, like, his charity streams, like, that I lo like because it's for a good cause. But at the, sa at the same time, at the same time as well, this is kind of like the double-edged sword with YouTube. It's like, yeah, you want to make a living off it, but if you don't, but if you don't keep producing the same content, you, you, it's not going to last for very long. <laughs> right. And you get caught up into a loop here on YouTube. Um you find what works, right? You find your niche, you know? Like, for me, particularly, I I tend to stray more and more from this manga-centric stuff, and I've made it quite clear, like, once Chainsaw Man's done, I'm retiring from full-time manga content because I'm burnt out on it. I did it for, at this point, basically five years, and I don't want to recycle the same topics again and again because I don't want to fall into that. But what I do enjoy is, like, gaming, specifically RPGs. So, like, I can turn that into my niche. And that's kind of, like, where YouTube goes. It's like, once you find your niche, you tend to get stuck in it. But if it doesn't perform well, then algorithmically, you can see, like, from our... When we put the Chainsaw Man videos up here on this channel, originally, like, the views were higher than doing, say, this podcast. Because I... I enjoy sitting down, chit-chatting about random topics, um, but they don't perform as well because algorithmically your channel is like, this was the manga channel, and where's the manga content? Where's this? Where's that? You know, where's One Piece? Where's fucking Chainsaw Man? Where's that? Because YouTube's algorithm sticks you into that box, so people like teching, they have to keep talking about random bullshit about one piece characters and it's unfortunate because you can tell like sometimes they don't enjoy doing that and i figure chibi gets tired of talking about every anime trailer ever um but to keep going and keep turning it into a business they have to yeah so that's why like i made the third channel to where i can just be all the live streams and all the gaming content because like the the algorithm doesn't know it as anything other than that now um and that works for that will it succeed i don't know but it's fun for me uh it'll be something that i'll enjoy and it's not going to burn me out because there is an infinite number of rpgs on this planet <laughs> oh yeah for sure like you've got you've the few of the famous ones the elder scrolls series and the um, knights of the old republic Let, let's break another elder scrolls game on stream uh that'll be fun uh, <laughs> Sky Skyrim, where you get where you get where you get to be the adoptive father and have uh, and have the kids going, Papa, Papa. Get get, get it to the where like I break the entire save file again. <laughs> you get yeah, there's like plenty of RPGs. There's like you know, there's Pokemon, Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Shin Megami Tensei, and all the found children. Uh, so like mother series. The, the one I'm going to be doing, uh, I, I kind of mentioned it, is like I, I signed up for a, a, a service uh, based on your views, your likes, et cetera, et cetera. You can get like key codes. Um, so I'm already planning on going through it. It's the Yakuza series because I've never played all of them. I played one way back when Mark Hamill did the dub. <laughs> 
And then, like, they remade it, and he's no longer Majima in it, but, um... Do yeah. You know what you... I was just gonna suggest something, uh, Vex. Only because... Only because I know the basic premise of the series. You should... You should read or watch Nisekoi and then do the voices of the characters in Yakuza as the characters from Nisekoi. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I, I, I'm I'm doing voice training as it is, and I'm only killing my voice more by doing it, because now I have all the tricks to where I can do screams more, and you can hear how fucking torn my vocal cords are right now, because like, four feet to my right is a studio mic, and I've been doing my side project on that, and I can... It is actually painful for me to talk right now. <laughs> Instead of feminizing my voice, I'm sounding more like Will Ramos. <laughs> it, is, it is the most counterproductive thing to my entire process that I'm going through. And I would not have it any other way in a strange way. But I know I have a very limited time that I can still do that. So I'm trying to do my passion project before I can no longer do that. But it's... It, there's a reason why I brought this all up. And there is one anime I want to cover before I step away from anime content. And it is the Tales anime dubs. Because they are the most cursed fucking thing on the planet. Has anybody watched those? I've watched like some of like the Zisteria anime. Um, I'm not sure if I've watched it dubbed or sub though. It was the, like a while ago. The dub is so fucking cursed. <laughs> of the, I, I there there is no rhyme or reason to how they did the ADR in that series. I found it the most hilarious thing. I was so fucking baked when I watched it originally. I did not stop laughing. <laughs> It's on some ghost story shit. <laughs> oh my god! Bad. Have you have you seen ghost stories, Pi Jams? Seen clips, so I know what's up. Oh, <laughs> that is something. That is something we need to do at one point. Binge all of um, all of ghost stories and just be like, "What did we just watch?" No, it is very much a "What did we just watch?" I watched that, and I watched the Corpse Party dub with an X. <laughs> <laughs> and like it's supposed to be a serious horror sinning show but it is so bad the dub of that is so bad <laughs> I, I i wouldn't mind doing like occasional content around anime or manga but i don't want to do it a, as a weekly thing anymore after chainsaw man Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. For and sure. Luke, you and I've had this conversation multiple times, uh, and you understand where I'm coming from. Uh, I'm sure yeah. Party Champs and Tyler do as well. Um, but uh, there, there's something to doing this that I feel really bad about, like the animators coming back and having to sit down and do the same series again and again and again, and. I, I feel like once we get past Attack on Titan, maybe we'll have a, a downtrend in this. This, like, multi-part stuff. But, at the same time, I, I do see the need for some of these, like, split them into multiple parts for production needs. Especially when they have a heavy load. But, what I don't want to see in the future, and I'm sure... It'll get some hate in the comments. Is I don't want to see some of these franchises come back. I don't. I would be one hundred percent okay if there's never another season of Dragon Ball. I would be one hundred percent okay if there's never another season of Fairy Tail. I don't. I, I honestly would be one hundred percent okay if they don't re reboot these or like even revisit them in any capacity because their stories have been told. But I realize like we come. We are a cyclic si a society where everything will eventually come back in some capacity because we sustain solely on nostalgia. And now that '90s stuff is back in, I want to be shocked if we see more than like. I know we just got Yashihime for the Inuyasha fans, right? I want to be shocked if we get like a fucking. Well, we did get a new Gundam actually. We got um, the Witch of Mercury one. So, like, even that proves my point. Like, we're going to continue to live in the cycle of, like, 
milking what made our childhood, you know, fun. So kind of continuing that idea, it's not even just anime. It like recently it was announced that Phineas and Ferb was coming back for more seasons. <laughs> I and saw that, that. Ended, like back in 2015. And again, it like I follow the creator like socials and he seems to like actually want to do this and the fandom is very active. But it, you're right, like the point is where there's demand and profit to be had, people will just bring back these series. But like with a series like Phineas and Ferb, it's almost like the concept of just like kids and their summer break just doing random stuff was fun. But it's like, how long is summer break? <laughs> There's 104 be- days of summer vacation. Didn't they do all 104 no. days? <laughs> no, no. The, the operating god did on the digital world time where an entire day in our world is one minute in the digital world. <laughs> well, shit, that'll be around when we're fucking corpses then. <laughs> like if, if the, there'll be as many failed attempts at reboots as there are successful ones like Phineas and Fur will be fine but then in Netflix because I know we brought that up a little bit they tried to do a magic school bus uh, reboot and that did not go over super well I watched so, one yeah. episode of that and I about vomited um, <laughs> my what I, it was just bad like the voice yeah, acting was. the animation like it was it was just bad um, the Johnny Test film was okay, though. Like, I don't Yeah, actually, what... I did like that one, but the Johnny Test is an interesting example, because a lot of people apparently didn't like it growing up. I mean, I really enjoyed it, so I think I, it's part of why I enjoyed the reboot. Right, same. Um, and I grew up with a lot of kids that fucking hated it. Um, so, we got Total Drama Island coming back, too. Like, that's an interesting Funny, one. It's like the absolute pinnacle of being milked. I didn't even realize how many sequel series went after, like, I stopped watching the original series. Uh, it, it went on for a while. I, I had recently, during quarantine, watched all of it. And uh, finding, like, the uncensored version was a challenge for some of those. Because um, here, it, they cut out, like, any, like, cuss words or any, like, threats uh, but you realize that Chris McLean is a fucking war criminal, right? <laughs> I, mean, that dude, I, he wouldn't, he would, he would be like prime candidacy for like lethal injection here. <laughs> oh, outside the realm of animation, like I think the big example, because Attack on Titan is understandable, while they might have either production issues or an original ending planned for the anime. Like, movies that are, like, based on book series. Like, when they split up those. Like, The Hobbit, I think, had, like, three oh, movies oh. for one book. The, oh, the what? Oh. The what? The Harry Potter. <laughs> the Hobbit. The, the what? Well, that, that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, the Hobbit films don't exist, um, Party John. So, uh, I, I think we have to They're make def- that perfectly clear. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think they tried an experimental film technique and split it over three parts here. Um... No, but, like, you're, okay, you're right. Then I'll use a different example that does exist, like The Hunger Games. They split up, like, the last book into two movies. It wasn't even... You, you that was know, not necessary. You want to know why they, why they were doing that at the time? Money, I assume? Money, but also of the, but also of the fact that... Um, uh, that okay, I'm, I'm just going to say, like, the fact that the last Harry Potter book was split into two films. Um, yeah, and they too. were like... Okay, we're gonna do that for every franchise. Twilight, Hunger Games. I don't know if they did it for Divergent, but they, they probably did. did it. For... Oh, they did it for Divergent. There they were go. going to try to anyway. They ended up. I believe the final book was a series on a sh- channel, and it got like three episodes and then canned. Um, All right. But no, like the only two of the films got made, and um, they were so commercially panned it was pathetic. And they're also making another Hunger Games. Uh, the the prequel book is getting turned into a movie now. Um, oh, didn't know that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so basically milking series are just like constantly, not just anime, it's not just Attack on Titan. It's just a whole thing that's happening now, which yeah. is why we wanted to talk about it. Yeah. I, it it's uh, very interesting, though, because like we, we could have had it even worse. Yeah. Um, because they were going to try to make the Similorian into a bunch of movies too, and instead we got the 
questionable Amazon series. I know a lot of people didn't like it. I rather enjoyed it, but I've not seen it, so I can't uh, so I can't judge it. Except for the fa- except for the fact that all all I the only um, points that I've been hearing are from are from the um, are from the quote unquote Walt Brigade that is neurotic, which is one of the worst YouTube channels ever. Do not watch him. Well, I'm not going to tell you not to watch a YouTube channel, but I, I will I will agree. Like there, there's a lot of contention around that series simply because of how it handled things, and like I get it, but content wise, the Similorian is so dense and verbose that there was no real good way to adapt it unless you dumbed it down and made it into a series, honestly. <laughs> like an episodic yeah. series because I read that in high school because it was required reading and then I didn't respect it as much because I'm like this is dumb compared to like you know fellowship two towers yada 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 but as an adult like I could not I don't know if I've just been fucked by like how media treats us but like I can't even sit down and read a book anymore I have to like audiobook that shit <laughs> yeah, I, that's pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. I, I mean, my big thing with reading is just that, like, my profession requires a lot of reading in itself. So reading starts becoming like a thing I do for fun, and more like, okay, I'm just gonna. I need pictures to accompany my words, and then I can go with the story. No, like that's why I got really into manga for the longest time. Is like I got so burnt out because I used to read a book a week, I, like. From the time I was, like, in fifth grade down to, like, my senior year of high school. And then once I... It became, like, a super required thing in college. Like, you need to read this dumb book and this, this like, book from the 1950s that is questionable in its content. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, this is getting, like, really bad. And then I tried to sit down. I bought every Witcher book. Which might have been the issue. Because <laughs> if you've tried to read or listen to The Witcher, it's very, very, like... Because it's translated from, I think, German. It's very hard to sit down and read because of how the language is translated. Like, but, is it a bad translation well, or is it just, like, dry? It's very dry. Well, here's what we do. Here's what we, do. we get um, Ann Arbor... Uh, in a in a um, mod modcast, he gets The Witcher in German, and he re reads slash translates it into English. That's actually probably got to be tough to do, like in real time. I would imagine it'd be interesting experiment though. Uh, Patreon. You would exclusive. have to like read the words and then be like, okay, now how can I say this in English? <laughs> you just say you just say it how it how it would translate into English. Well, no, because like. I mean, I don't know how many languages you speak, Luke, but it's not always that straightforward. It's not. It like, I know, I know. Like, well, it, my Japanese is rusty as fuck, but, like, I understand, like, why some things get translated differently in manga. Like, it's... Yeah. Because I that was one elective I took was Japanese. I took French for a year, I took Japanese for two, and I took Spanish for two, and it... I've retained none of Spanish, I retained none of French, and I retained very little Japanese. <laughs> like, I really, I, I downloaded Duolingo just to kind of brush up on my Japanese. Because it's something I don't want to really fully lose, but it's something I can feel myself losing over time. I don't give a fuck if I lose the Spanish or the French, because I have no desire to really go back to either of those like locales really and i'll picture myself vacationing in fucking uh like cancun or some shit or on the french isles or anything but like going to japan i wouldn't mind you know taking a trip there at some point uh so relearning that would be really handy you know <clears throat> but um no like German is like a very, from what I understand, is like a very dense and dry language to kind of translate. And I understand why, like that would be a very hard one to do for, especially like a high fantasy setting. <laughs> yeah, uh, but like even 
because I buy a lot, a lot of light novels like Overlord, Sword Art Online, stuff like that. Like even reading those, I find challenging sometimes anymore. So like, I have Audible for a lot of that. It's it's depressing having gone from like reading that much in in like a, a short time span to like now and not being able to actually sit down and focus. Um, I think that's why like I enjoy the kind of content that we cultivate here is like I don't have to put a lot of thought into it <laughs> whereas like if we did things like the the chibi way or the the teching way like there would be a like a script on one monitor that I'm reading and then like the other <laughs> one over here is just like the OBS panel <laughs> uh I couldn't imagine doing that no, I could, especially daily. You couldn't imagine doing that daily. Right, and there are channels that do that. And, like, I, I put out, like, that call to action, like, people to write scripts and stuff so we could try, like, scripts and stuff. And, like, I'm kind of, in a way, glad that nobody really answered that one. But they answered the, the banner, which is coming along swimmingly so far. There's had to be, like, some minor changes here and there. But what... What we should do is, now that Tyler dropped out of the call, I don't know what's going on there. There he is. Uh, never Literally mind. Uh, he returns. The timing on that is hilarious. Uh, so, if, let's say you got dropped out of the call. I'm not having that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, I had to finish dinner. Uh, yeah, well, no, it's fine, man. We, we were just like... It funny how that worked out um but no like i was saying like since he had dropped out of the, the call like I, the thing that i would like to do like starting the next podcast is tackling a couple of these topics at a time because we have a massive list and yeah, mostly so mostly thanks to luke being like a sorry. mastermind <laughs> sorry uh, uh the the british devil was too much of a devil <laughs> Like, it's like a page and a half of topics at this point, and a lot of them can kind of overlap. That's why I'm, like, rambling here. There's some that we could even shorn into this, but, like, it's in an hour and a half combined time-wise, so I don't want to drag it on too long. Yeah, but, yeah, we could probably just do, like, a whole podcast of backlog topics. Yeah, we could. Um, but one thing I do want to bring up about um series that are coming back is um one of the more one of the more popular ones which i'm surprised fex didn't bring up yet avatar uh which uh, oh right uh the the, the real one. the real avatar right well i <laughs> mean one of them is the top of the box office right now um uh, the the real true avatar, not not the not the um uh not the um cat smurf avatar. <laughs> cat smurf <laughs> dances with wolves with lipstick one as I called it in one episode and I got <laughs> yelled at for that. Uh... Yeah, um, but yeah, we've got a new avatar series coming with the um next in the avatar cycle. Yeah, no, like here's the, yeah, they the made part. a whole studio for Avatar at this point, if I heard correctly. You, you are, um, so uh, the Avatar see. is like they've continued the story in so many mediums. Like, I've read uh, like the Korra comics, um, to continue that story, as well as some of the uh, Avatar Aang comics that continued his, and it's like interesting to see what happened. Like to it, those characters, like after we start following them in the yeah. show. But at the same time, it's like it is like a very prime example of man, this is never going to end. But weirdly, I don't know. I think with Avatar, it's like not been a problem yet. And I'm not really sure how to explain why. It's I don't not think been, it's, it's not probably been... because, like, uh, if you think about it, like to me as an outsider to Avatar, I will admit the OG Avatar and Korra kind of have completely different vibes to them. They mm -hmm. do. Like, they the, really do. The locales for each series, in my mind, are vastly different from each other. No, yeah, you're, so you're like, right. You can have, like, an avatar in the modern day. You could have that's... a caveman avatar. You could have avatar in space. That's probably what's going to happen. Uh, the Earth avatar is probably going to be a... Uh, in the mo in the modern in the modern day, and 
Yeah, uh, the way I pictured it is like what I would prefer to happen in this new series is that the Avatar, because this is something that I don't think has ever been answered. Can the Avatar be an only child? I what? Like, because all the avatars you see, they are all seem to be only childs, like Korra, Aang, um, Kyoshi, uh, Ro- Roku. They don't seem to have any so siblings at all. Wait, does this one have a sibling? That's what that that is my that is my idea. I want there to be a sibling who has no bending, and the bro- and the sibling to the avatar, and they're the main antagonist. Basically, um, basically pissed at pissed at the Earth, hinting for uh, giving them this uh, giving them this um, shitty treat. Yeah, you know, like that that is an interesting concept because, like, we you're right, we've never seen like a sibling avatar situation. So then it might be lore that they have to be an only child, but at the same time, we yet yeah, we've never we've never had that confirmed, and you think that would be confirmed? I, um, it's the same thing I feel about, like, Assassin's Creed, right? Like, it's a, it's a franchise that can take place in any time period, and that's what I love about that. But at the same time, like, traveling from time period to time period in the Avatar setting is vastly different than, like, an Assassin's Creed scenario where, like, you, technology helps power that universe. Because we're able to go back in time and you know, through the Animus or whatever technology is going on in the fucking Valhalla, because I haven't had a chance to play Valhalla yet. Um, but I... you, you, you kind of have that that aspect of like here is like World War Two time period where you can have like modern technology fighting a bender. Is there bullet bending? Is it what, like the Matrix? There's a lot yeah. that you could do. And also, like and also as well, I feel like uh, part of the reason why it doesn't feel milk to the Avatar franchise, uh, but it feels like it's had so much content, is because of those massive time jumps. Like, Korra takes place 70 years after the original series, so there's massive um, leaps in the history there. Yep. And I wouldn't be surprised if this new series, like, if uh, the uh, Korra series takes place in, like, the equivalent of the 19 first it takes place today so it's like oh it's like 90 years in the future from Korra. but think of like has anybody played fable or am i the only one here no i think you're the only one so um and fable there there's three games we don't count the one that's the on rail shooter for the connect there's three games and each one of them takes place in a distinct time period and each one you're the chosen hero because it's a fucking RPG. And it's Peter Molyneux, so you know there's a million promises that never happen in the franchise. We forgive it. But each one is, like, a different plot in, like, the real world. But it's, like, with fantasy. So, like, you have, like, the olden times, like, your high fantasy era. You have your, like, this is the beginning of, like, mainstream civilization. We have, like, brick buildings. We have stores. We're able to, like, save our food for more than, like, two, three days at a time. And then we have, like, an industrial revolution going on in the third one. It's kind of the same thing you have in the Avatar franchise, where, like, you you have, like, the means of mass production going on in Korra. So that's why, why stuff like metal bending makes more sense then. But, like, can, if you go, like, to now, could you have, like, technomancy being a thing and, like... A modern like would that be a bending ability like could when, potentially be like it's such a fascinating thing to think about because every time we have this time jump we see how bending has evolved yeah we do um but also as well what could potentially happen is like um it's like what we're what we're seeing right now with like um the mass protests because of um global warming and that like, yeah, bending, bending's contributing to global warming. <laughs> that that I'd be perfectly fine. I'd be perfectly fine with uh, because it would be like an extension on the anti-bender movement in Korra. Well, I mean, just, I think it's, just not as uh, part just of not the as issue is just that, like, if bending was actually doing that, I mean, bending's been going on since time immemorial, effectively, and so that's like oh. would. That kind of goes against what like climate change actually is, where it's like more our modernization 
of human civilization has like it dramatically changed the way the planet's climate has yeah. been over the last all, two centuries. All, all the Avatar this time is actually uh, is actually the uh, is actually similar to what Ang was in um, in um, in the original series, just in a modern same where he was getting pissed off about technology interfering with his. Um, with, with it, with it, with the practices of, practices of his ancient culture. Hmm. It worked with Aang because he was like a hundred years older than the world in and of itself. So I don't know if it works here. I mean, it, if anything, almost the opposite would have worked. Like, like the spiritual element would be harder to tap into to someone who is very connected to the modern age. Yeah. That, I I I'd like that as well. Like um, the only because... thing is, I'm forgetting if Cora was like like Cora had trouble with like airbending, right? But like spiritually, yeah, she, she was she she had trouble at the beginning spiritually and airbending, but by the end, um, she got more she got more in tuned with it, yeah, and also okay. the spirits were brought back eventually. So like you have basically at, by the end of Cora, you have like literally anybody can go into the spirit world. Yeah. So, like, I'm trying to remember, like, because Ang struggled the most with, uh, what was it, like, fire bending? It was, was it no, it was with earth bending because he was, it, because he was more graceful, like, or twinkle toes as tough called him, whereas uh, she wanted to be more like head, uh, head on, hot headedness. Right. Okay. So this guy is either going to struggle with like. Is probably gonna start with fire bending then. I th I think of him struggling more with uh, with water bending because yeah. water is uh, is more it... graceful and fluid, whereas uh, earth bending is more like um, is more like brute force. Yeah, uh, well, in that case, like we could a... probably go ahead. Oh yeah, I was gonna say then we could probably tie that into the whole like struggling with spiritual stuff because there's those the spiritual fish. In the northern water temple and whatnot. So yeah, that could work. And I go ahead, Vex. Yeah, it seems to always be like the polar opposite of like how the character is. So like Aang was not want to be like hot headed because he was like Taoist in nature. Uh, so and Korra always seemed to be like going for everything. So she struggled more with the opposite of that. So like Earth, the character would probably be like gong ho. Like I would be gung ho and not want to be like calm and content with like going with the motion. So yeah, like water bending or air bending would be like where they would struggle again. I it's... think it would be water bending because we already had the struggle with air bending right. with Cora. But I'm just like Where going I... off of like human nature uh, aspects yeah. of things. Uh, I'd... If we eventually get the fire, if we eventually like complete the cycle and we get the fire fire avatar protagonist, um, be interested to see what direction they take them. Yeah, it, it it'll be interesting to see where, like where that goes. Um, now to just to go through the insanity that Luke has here, right? Um, don't please don't flex. So. I, I marked this one, Don, in the app. App is what I was doing. I, I really... There's three that I want to get to in the, while I'm on break. So, just to tease. Characters with wasted potential. Overpraised for one story aspect, which, you know, you have stuff like Promised Everland that could fit onto that. Because, like, it's... Ch Chase arc in the Grace Field is, like, it's one big praised thing and the rest of it is much weaker and then plot lines that we wish were revisited we all we could put all of those into one episode yeah yeah we could do that yeah uh, uh i was just uh, i was just pointing them down as like oh oh that would be good oh that would be good to talk about oh uh, yeah d that definitely like particularly the uh, uh praise for one story aspect case in point hunter hunters chimera hunter hunters second half of the chimera and talk but there's one that would be a very long episode, and that's is streaming killing long form storytelling. Oh yeah, that one will be a divisive episode because there's definitely aspects on both sides of that. So that'll be a fun one to get to. But um, the the last thing that we can dive into here, and I know, 
I know we brought up a bit of it, but I feel like we have the same like milking aspect going on with the MCU. Yeah. Dude, I haven't seen too many MCU movies like after the last Avengers thing. So yeah, you guys can kind of take it away from here because all I know is there's like way too much for me to keep up with anymore. No, that's that's, that's, that's the that's the issue I'm coming up to. Like, there's like seven fucking TV shows that you need to throw into. Like, I remember when it used to be like you didn't have to watch everything to understand what the hell was going on. Now everything is so woven into the lore that. You have to watch Loki, but you also have to watch Captain America's, like, spinoff show, Falcon and Winter Soldier. You have to watch, like, fucking WandaVision. You have to watch Hawkeye and all this shit just to kind of understand what's going on with the new it, movie now. It's the meme with... Um, platforms, too. It, it's the Rick and Morty theme. Like, you have to have... You have to watch um, uh, WandaVision to truly get the aspect of um, Doctor, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I had to suffer through fucking WandaVision twice. Like, that would have been a better movie than it would have been a TV show, in my opinion. Like, WandaVision could have been a phenomenal MCU movie instead of a 10-episode or whatever season of TV. And they could have made Black Widow that ep- episodic format, and it would have functioned so much better. Because think about, like, the character of Black Widow. She's a spy. That would work so well as, like, a five or ten episode limited series versus a two and a half hour movie about a character that's already dead in canon. <laughs> I, I I don't understand some of Disney's decisions with the MCU lately. Um, like, Hawkeye would have been a great movie instead of a yeah. TV show. I. Loki would have been a great movie instead of, you know, Shang-Chi or, you know, whatever else. Like, Shang-Chi Eternals. was... Oh, the what? Uh, the Eternals? I, I love that director, but she has no tact for cape shit, as you would call it. Yeah. The only good thing about um, the Eternals was the post credit scene. <laughs> Uh, it, the, the, it's you know it's bad when the movie is being praised for its post credit scene and being the first on screen sex scene in the MCU. Like those were the two things people remember it for, not the story itself. <laughs> they only remember it for for um, uh, introducing Star Fox um, brother to the Mad ta- Mad, Mad Titan ta- Thanos, who is dead in canon. <laughs> And the fact that two people got it on on a dirt ground in the middle of, I think it was China or Egypt, one or the other. Although, what I love most about that, uh, when people react to that post credit scene, is that people people, uh, people question, like, how can him and Thanos be brothers? <laughs> you know, that is a great point, though, because people are just like, well, Thanos is purple, so why uh, is he, that... But- you gotta read the comics. Uh, you gotta read the comics. But the thing that made the MCU so great was he didn't have to read the fucking comics, even though there were tie-in fucking comics. <laughs> I, that, that's so annoying. Like it, it's it used to be something that I looked so forward to. You know, it was an event, right? That, like, you treated the MCU releases as an event. You would go, you would sit down in the theater, surrounded by a bunch of other super fans. And now, you have people taking a goddamn TikTok in the middle of the theater. Because they're like, I'm an influencer here, you know, going in and watching Ant-Man and Quantumania. And look at me, I'm be- I'm doing some stupid dance in the middle of the fucking screen instead of sitting down and enjoying the movie because all they want to do is chase clout and that and then not care about the movie. Or you have the fact that you have to sit down and watch 85 other things just to understand three seconds of plot that are going on in the <laughs> well, I feel really like a boomer related to what you I mean, yeah, I get that. It's like tangentially related, but once you brought up TikToks and movies, 
I also wanted to say I recently uh, went and saw Megan, which was a fun movie. And I what I'm bringing up now is because, like, there were just so many random TikTok dances that were basically just put in. And they, it had, like, no purpose to the actual movie, but the comedic elements <laughs> made it hilarious. And it was done on purpose because, like, I think the staff or somebody on the staff tweeted, hey, if you're under 25 and you saw this, thanks for that. And I'm like, yeah, you were definitely targeting that audience, I could tell. No, like, that but, movie uh, was so much fun, though. Like, it was, it was yeah, so... Megan was fun. And it's getting a sequel, but too. It, mm. Yeah, it deserves it. But, like, um, with the MCU, I think my thing with it is, like, once you kind of lose track of it, it's hard to go back. And also with so much, like, history put into the story... It's like, how can someone ever get into it? Because like originally, this these films were a way like younger people, like kids, teenagers, which is about probably our age by the time this started. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, get into like this series of like history comic book characters, but now it's like they really can't. Because even if you go and see like the new Ant Man movie, it's like, well, this Ant Man movie has like two. Pre, two movies before it, as well as like a whole legion of films that are connected to it beforehand. Yep. So there's like no good entry points to this, which is like the whole problem with comics to begin with. Like the movies just ended up creating the dilemma that comics had. Yep. And, and see, like the way that Kevin Feige had originally pitched it was like this is you know a way that entryway for you to get into this this franchise, but even back, you know, like, when the first Avengers came out, I I saw, like, little bits and pieces of this starting to pop up. Like, if you want to get into it now, like, you can, but man, what, five years down the road? Uh, I think I was, like, 19, 20-year-old me seeing what we're seeing now. It's <laughs> unfortunate, because this was such a great way to launch a whole new legion of comic book fans, and that's something that it did very well, and then every other studio on the fucking planet tried to emulate the success of the MCU and have failed miserably. Like, anybody remember the Monster Universe? <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I think that's still technically alive, because they're it doing... It is! TV. And honestly, as a Godzilla fan, I can't really complain. I've really enjoyed the recent Godzilla outings, but... Yeah, like, I don't think any studio has like really captured it at this point the cinematic universe i'm rooting for the most besides i guess the monster one is like if sega and nintendo are like going to start making their own movies then like i hope to god they succeed in theirs because they've been making some good stuff could you imagine a sonic universe honestly I... it's pretty easy to do yeah, there's like so is. much canon material like even he... even uh, go ahead. Like, E621 is just going to blow up with more furry porn, and I, I hate that reality, and I reject it. <laughs> but at the same time, like, go off, well, like, because they've been like, fun. a Metroid movie. Yeah, that would be really good, and frankly, they could do it, except the fact that they can't even make a Metroid game, like, right now. I don't know what's going on with that. Dread. Well, Metroid Dread happened. Out. Yeah, that's a good point. But, like, Metroid Prime 4 has been rebooted, I think, three times at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's very concerning. But, yeah, I, want I guess they can so still bad. make it <laughs> I want that game so goddamn bad. Uh, I love the Metroid Prime games. I, uh, <sighs> as long as, let's say, in the theoretical future, if they make a... Um, like Mario or a Nintendo Cinematic Universe, they have to make the Metro movie at least PG-13, and I need her... I need the vibes of it to be, I want her to step on me. I, I might be alone in that, but that's the vibe that Samus gives off, and I want the, the actress to give off that same vibe. Hey, if you, if you want step on me vibes, you go, you go have Bayonetta. That is never going to happen. That that movie is never going to happen. They are never going to make a live action TY Bayonetta. Man. That would work, honestly. I feel like that would work. It it would be in no, the same I, vein as like the Resident Evil movie. So I feel like, 
Like, like if they make it, it's just going to be a mess. It's going to be a train wreck of tropes, and that's only going to exist. The fuck am I saying? The goddamn the entire point of the movie is to have her almost as naked as possible, anyway. So why not? Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> like it's just so like it knows what it is to the point where you can easily just make that the movie. Just make it a fucking porno at this point. Why not? I'm sure that exists. Somebody will probably link it in the comments. Uh, for research purposes, please. I'll, I'll, I'll be watching the filtered comments on this video. <laughs> no, buddy. If you made it to this point in the video, comment bunger. <sighs> bunger. <laughs> I, 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 if, if, if one person types Bunger the not in the cast of this video, I'll be shocked. I um, will be as well. But, like, I, I want a Nintendo Cinematic Universe, or Smash Brothers Universe is what has been pitched as, because that would be so much fun. Like, a Star Fox movie, but since they won't make a fucking new game. Um, f Yeah, and I feel like the people who are, like, against the idea of a Smash Brothers Universe doesn't understand, it's like... The point is not to make, like, Smash Brothers, the video game, like, a whole movie, because it's not, like, plot important. It's the cool idea is that having all these video game characters interact right. with each other. Like Ness, you know, interacting with fucking random C-tier background character of, like, a Star Fox game. But also, like, you have a crossover between Mario and Sonic, but it isn't the Olympics. It's... Like it works so well. Like, but also as well, um, uh, speaking of Ness, get that Earthbound animated series. I want an animated series based on Xenoblade. That's entire... Yeah, it's surprising that hasn't happened, honestly. You know, that entire franchise screams anime. I'm I'm actually as shocked as you guys that that hasn't happened. I, it must be Monolith Soft has an iron fist on that. Which, I mean, fair enough, it's, like, their big thing. But also, like, the second game is just, like, made to be an anime. Honestly. And then the third one I hear has furries in it. <laughs> I mean, the first game had furries, technically. But if like, you count bird people as furries, or would they be featheries? Yeah, I was gonna say those would be featheries. I am really... I need to stop talking before I incriminate myself more with furry allegations. <laughs> Looks four <laughs> feet to the right uh, to a pair of cat ears. Um, so yeah, uh, but like, I, I get, it's almost like the I, the era from Final Fantasy. Like there's like bunny people and cat people in the third game. I heard, um, but. I I don't know. I need to play those games because the first one was so fucking great. It was. <laughs> yeah, miracle. <laughs> Sorry. You good? Yeah, it's just I just sneeze. You sneeze. I just sneeze. Yeah, it's a didn't, miracle that we have, have like this. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, I was gonna say it's a miracle that like we even have the Xenoblade trilogy because there was a point where it didn't even almost get localized uh, over here. And I now imported it's like it. a huge RPG series. I imported the Wii version. It cost me a fortune. Well, I, I I I remember heard. that era. Uh, I like I also remember the era of like it will never get localized for uh, J Stars, and it, that cost me like. Two hundred and fifty dollars to import, <laughs> and then like a month and a half later, it got localized, and I won a fucking scream. Uh, <laughs> uh, the past, it's the worst sometimes. Yeah, but now like we have region-free like consoles being more normalized, so that's really great. So yeah, that's one of the good things about the present. Like, I, I am very shocked that we live in an era where we have a Kobayashi's Dragon Maid game actually natively localized in the U.S. too. I didn't know there was a game. It's not good, but it exists. Wait, natively localized? Natively localized. In America. 
I, I, I am very happy with the reality. I just wish the game was better. Because I'm a huge Kobayashi fan. Um, it's one of my fucking guilty pleasure series. I know it's very, very bizarro. And there's some questionable topics in it. But, like, there's it's also very fun. Um, but then again, like, there's also, like, the fairy tale game that got natively localized that, like, you go 10 years back and you have never even thought of it being brought over here. Well, then again, like, Fairy Tale has always been kind of popular here in America, so that one might have actually succeeded. Yeah, it's a bigger Shonen series, so that one's pretty straightforward. Bigger but, and more yeah, ways than you... one. Isn't there an Eden Zero game in the works, too? Yeah, that's been, I think, in the works for a little while now. But then again, time post-2020 has been really weird for me, so I could be wrong about that. No, like, you're yeah, not wrong. <laughs> but yeah, Eden Zero, there's like an RPG in the making. Um, I think there was like a mobile game also that they were working on. Mashima was like helping with. But yeah, uh, I think it was supposed to coincide with the second season whenever it comes out. And, like, what studio-wise is Octopath? That's in Asano, isn't it? It's Team Asano. Yeah, they're the developer, so Square Enix is the publisher. I would like to see that put into a anime, too. Yeah, the Bravely Games would do great as an anime by itself, and Octopath uh, would fit. The only thing is, like, I think with Octopath... Um, and why I said Bravely more than Octopath is just because Octopath is less, if I remember correctly, focused on like a central plot and more like character focus. So yeah. if they did an anime, it would have to be more like each episode would focus on like a different character, and which they, they could like, do. Yeah. And with the mobile game, they have like a whole prequel uh, kind of already set up. So yeah, yeah. that's why I'm like, I because. There was a period in time where I was watching, like, bits and pieces of that. Because I didn't want to sink money into another fucking gotcha game at the time. Um, it's not worth it. Like, the actual... I, I played it. It's super fun. But it's, like, the gotcha elements really do, like, ruin it. Just because it's, like, okay, well, I could play without the gotcha elements. But also, like, it just kind of drags at some point. Yeah, like, that was my unfortunate reality for... Uh, SAO had a... I think it was called Memory Defrag. Like, it had, like, its own version of that. Like, if you didn't sink into the gotcha, like, you were, like, left behind in the story. Because, like, getting from, like, Aincrad to Alfheim, like, there was a massive skill jump. You had to just grind the shit out of that game. It got really annoying. Same with um, Kingdom Hearts. Uh, Union Cross. I know Ann Arbor will probably disagree with me, but that got really, like, dependent on the, the gotcha element of it. That's why I just started watching, like, the story. Because uh, it being Namora, he tied the fucking story into the gotcha game. Uh, <laughs> still annoyed about that. Um, and arguably, that is some of the best story in the whole Kingdom Hearts franchise. So, that's fun. Uh... Yeah, those got really annoying. I would love to see, like, it's been rumored for, like, ages, like, a fucking Kingdom Hearts anime. That would be so much fun. And... Uh, I mean, probably would be a lot of legal issues, because... That's what I was thinking. It's probably gonna be, uh, unless they could do a compromise, like, with Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It's not so much, like, because it's all self-contained, except for the only thing they haven't been able to bring back due to, like, copyright and everything is, like, Tarzan. Like, that's the only one they've ever ran into an issue with. Because they've been able to bring back, like, every other story except for that one. Um, uh, wait, what other story could you um, uh, cut out then? <laughs> So, like, Tarzan's the only one they've ever ran into issues with, and I think that's because, oh, right. like, it does comics, it does, like, film, it does all sorts of random stuff. Um, but, like, every other franchise in there, like, Disney owns at least a version of the copyright, too. So, all they'd have to do is kind of just, like, slap that up. Uh, and then again, like, public domain now for Winnie the Pooh, so that might be an issue. Um... 
No. But the other thing is, like, with the Kingdom Hearts anime, would they, like, actually adapt the story, or would they just include a whole new aspect to the story to expand the plot of it even more? Oh, please God, not the latter. <laughs> but, um... Saying, like, part of the reason, like, I, like, I didn't grow up with Kingdom Hearts, but, like, I enjoy, like following it up to a point until i'm like wait i am very lost what's going on now? it was stream drop distance wasn't it <laughs> i think it was around that point <laughs> once they added time travel i'm like what the fuck is going on anymore namora please lay off the acid but um and there was like a mobile game that was tied into it like i yep. i tried that for a little bit but then i'm like nah and then I when i tried like looking into three i'm like okay you know what I, i'm i actually am officially lost <laughs> i'm not sure i can do this <laughs> They they put Backdoor out, which uh, kind of cleared up a lot of the mobile game stuff, which was, like, really helpful for those that didn't. But at the same time, like, yeah, no, it gets fucking crazy. And as much as I love the franchise, I wish she'd dial it back, like, 10 degrees so people can get reinvested in it. Um, four yeah, something. Looks... if they make an anime, they just, like, need to just tell me the story, like, from start to finish and not add, like, a whole other aspect to the story. And also tell it in fucking chronological order too. <laughs> Not like, okay, and now we're telling Birth by Sleep, which takes place before Kingdom Hearts 1. <laughs> they really went George Lucas with that shit, and it was annoying. Uh, Nomura has always been like crazy, though. I, I love the man to death. Uh, but it's annoying. Also, like, may also, maybe have your titles be legible uh, and, like, not have some weird pronunciation, uh, like, three, five, eight days over two. <laughs> Full math formula. Okay, and also, what topic are we on? <laughs> I'm actually not sure. I I'm killing some of the, the like, menial topics in the, um the document here like in which yeah. one are we on so this I, was like franchises were their beloved one that we, uh, we were um going to bring into another video and like we can talk about this since we were talking about like the mcu and it going off rails we can shoehorn this into it but like i feel like that's the other really milky one is like any rpg now has seemed to got like into like it's it has to have a mobile game it has to have like some sort of anime tie-in and it also has to have like eight thousand entries, and I I do I do think that like that's a good thing and a bad thing though in that aspect because it makes something like more accessible, you know. But yeah, I I don't want to see seven hundred, and I might be in the the minority here because Tyler, you're a big like like Guilty Gear fan, for example. Um, but I don't want to see, like, 7,000 entries for, like, anime spinoffs for a fighting game now. Mm. Like, yeah, because the, 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 the plot is convoluted enough because it's made by Arc System Works. So there there was a rumor uh, that they were making a Blaze Blue anime. That's why I mentioned Guilty Gear. Uh, well, they did. They did? Yeah, it's called Blaze Blue Ultra Memory. It it covered uh, the first two games and I believe like twelve or twenty four episodes. Where was I during this period? I, I I thought this was like a recent rumor. It came out in two thousand thirteen. Maybe it's a reboot that they were talking about doing for like the new games then. Yeah, but like here's the problem with the Blaze Blue anime. It was only like twelve to twenty-four episodes when each each of the first two games needed twenty-four episodes, considering how many moving pieces are in a, are are in Blaze Blue. So, like, that's the thing, right? Because whenever they adapt like a series like that, it ends up being really, really annoying in how it handles it, or it's like overly baby baby steps so like the tales anime like i was mentioning earlier it goes so far off the fucking rails while also trying to handhold you it's the weirdest ad adaptation 
and that. So, like, that's what I would fear if, like, we got to the level of, like, bringing in, like, a Kingdom Hearts anime or, like, something like that that's overly milked and beloved. Because, like, I don't want to see things like that get completely destroyed. But at the same time, like, there's a need to introduce it to new audiences, too. The perfect one, the perfect adaptation for me was, like, the Street Fighter movie. Because it worked well. I'd like to see something like that. Or the Bayonetta movie. Did anybody watch that? Nope. Bayonetta movie? There was, it was Bloody Fate, I believe was the name of it. It was like early 20, like 15, I think, they came out. I could be wrong on that. Um, but like, it was basically like uh, the Devil May Cry anime. It was like, I think it was even the same studio. I could get corrected in the comments here i don't care um but it told a story in the universe but it didn't like try to shoehorn like the original uh the original uh game or try to diverge too far from the established lore those those were the types of adaptations that would work really well i feel like for these um beloved franchises uh, but I think we went long enough. It's now a two-hour uh, video between the two parts. So, any final thoughts on milking, beloved franchises, what's next, uh, that kind of thing, guys? Just uh, my final words will be just let franchises die, uh, or at the very least, do something different with them. And also as well, stop uh, stop milking uh, seasons. Like, do either one really long season or just make it a separate season altogether. Yeah, I, I can get behind that mission statement here. Like, there, there are franchises that went on way too long. Looking at, like, Detective Conan, for example. Like, there's no conceivable way that that will ever be a finished franchise by anybody. Nobody's going to sit down and read a hundred or a thousand forty five chapters of something unless they started it you know when they were a kid or like close to the start date of it i i i know that that's a false statement because there are people that are starting one piece right now and are catching up with it but like you get the point <laughs> well yeah but one piece was like a story there's a narrative behind it detective conan is just like I don't know, mystery of the week continuously forever, which is yeah. really disappointing because the central mystery is what drove me to like really enjoy it as a kid. But then I fell off. Yeah, like it's basically the anime Scooby Doo. Yep, which is fine if it was more like not but. narrative based, but mm -hmm. like Scooby Doo, which is just more fun. But uh, my final thoughts on this is, number one, when you talked about Tales as well as RPG mobile stuff, Tales is very bad at making a mobile adaptation of their uh, series. Uh -huh. I mean, Crestoria was, like, so good. And they're like, yeah, we're deciding to no longer do this cool thing anymore and instead make another mobile game that will fail within the year. So, uh -huh. yeah, Tales, please... Like, just stop trying to do mobile games and also bring Crystoria as, like, a full game, please. <laughs> and the next thought, in terms of beloved franchises, uh, that I think is a good example to use. And I'm using this one just because, like, I recently got back into reading the comic series for this series. Uh, uh, My Little Pony, which was, like, that series went on for, like, a decade. But I was surprised when it ended because, like, I thought that it's like, man, this series could probably go for a couple more seasons. But instead, they ended, I thought, at a pretty decent place. And, like, when they went to revitalize the franchise, because it's been going on since, like, the 80s, they just, like, rebooted it to, like, something completely different for, like, a new, like, generation of kids. And I think that is probably the best way to, like, go about it, as weird as it's used as a standard for how to handle a franchise it's just like every decade or so just like end your series and then just make a new iteration with like some of the similar concepts i mean power rangers can do it and my little pony can do it i'm pretty sure other franchises can do something similar yeah transformers transformers did, that did it yeah yeah that another was... good example right there yeah uh, my two varying degrees Ninja turtles 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, Turtles is a good one, too. Like, the, the new one, like, that animation style kind of put me off for a while, but, like, I hear it's really good, too. Oh, yeah, it's excellent. I honestly recommend giving it another shot, because once I gave it a solid chance, it was worth the watch. I like the idea of them all being different turtles, too. Like, different breeds of turtles, I guess you would call it. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, Transformers was a prime example of, like, doing that to varying degrees of some success, too. Because, like, the last one lasted, I think, maybe a year, max. And then, like, even Prime, uh, which was fucked by the hub... Um, <clears throat> that one was very good, and it was dark, gritty. I love the animation style of it. The but, hub? Yeah, I think Party Jams and I are the only ones that know about the hub here. <laughs> it might be, yeah. They had MLP. I think it's and the versus... wrong hub. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, they oh. had like the they had like My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, which I raised the keys on, uh, and then fucking. Like, Dan Versus was a very underrated series. I, I so want to revisit that series in a video at some point, too. But uh, definitely be up for a discussion on that. It deserves so much better. Uh, but yeah, no. I think that's a great way to end it. Um, stay tuned for the next one where we kind of dive into a bunch of these cool topics. And then a special episode with just me and Red, which will be probably age restricted um given youtube's recent handling of the channel so be sure to sign in for that one peace peace